6 easy pieces. Let's roll the intro. Quantum physics. Having described the idea of the electromagnetic field and that this field can carry waves, we soon learn that these waves actually behave in a strange way, which seems very unwave like. At higher frequencies, they behave much more like particles. It is quantum mechanics, discovered just after 1920, which explains the strange behavior. In the year before 1920, the picture of, of space as three-dimensional space and of time as a separate thing was changed by Einstein, first into a combination which we call space-time, and then still further into a curved space-time to represent gravitation. So the stage is changed into space-time and gravitation, presumably a modification of space-time. Then it was also found that the rules for the motion of particles were incorrect. The mechanical rules of inertia and forces are wrong. Newton's law are wrong in the world of atoms. Instead, it was discovered that things on a small scale behave nothing like things on a large scale. This is what makes physics difficult and very interesting. It is hard because the way things have on a small scale is so unnatural, we have no direct experience with it. Here things behave like nothing we know of, so that is impossible to describe this behavior in any other than analytic ways. It is difficult and takes lot of imagination. Quantum mechanics has many aspects. In the first place, the idea that a particle has a definite location and a definite speed is no longer allowed it. That is wrong. To give an example of how wrong classical physics is, there is a rule in quantum mechanics that says that one cannot know both where something is and how fast it is moving. The uncertainty of the momentum and the uncertainty of the position are complementary and the product of the two is bounded by a small constant. We can write the law like this. Delta x times delta p greater than equal to Lang's constant over 2. But we shall explain it in more detail later. This rule is the explanation of a very mysterious paradox. If the atoms are made out of plus and minus charges, why don't the minus charges simply sit on top of the plus charges? They attract each other and get so close as to completely cancel them out. Why are atoms so big? Why is the nucleus at the center with the electrons around it? It was first thought that this was because the nucleus was so big. But no, the nucleus is very small. An atom has a diameter of about 10 raised to minus 8 cm. The nucleus has a diameter of about 10 raised to minus 13 cm. If we had an atom and wished to see the nucleus, we would have to magnify it until the whole atom was the size of a large room. And then the nucleus would be pale speck, which you could just about make out with the eye. But very nearly all the weight of the atom is in that infestational nucleus. What keeps the electrons from simply falling in? This principle, if they were in the nucleus, we would know their position precisely. And the uncertainty principle would then require that they have a very large but uncertain momentum. That is a very large kinetic energy. With this energy, they would break away from the nucleus. They make a compromise. They leave themselves 
a little room for the uncertainty and the jiggle with a certain amount of minimum motion in accordance with this rule remember that when a crystal is cooled to the absolute zero we said that the atoms do not stop moving they still jiggle why if they stop moving we would know where they were and that they had zero motion and that is against the uncertainty principle we cannot know where they are and how fast they are moving so they must be continuously wiggling in there another most interesting change in the ideas and philosophies of science brought about the quantum mechanics in this it is not possible to predict exactly what will happen in any circumstances for example it is possible to arrange an atom which is ready to emit light and we can measure when it has emitted light by by picking up a photon particle which we shall describe shortly we cannot however predict when it is going to emit the light or with several atoms which one is going to you may say that this is because there are some internal wheels which we have not looked at closely enough no there are not internal wheels nature as we understand it today behaves in such a way that it is fundamentally impossible to make a precise prediction of exactly what will happen in a given experiment this is horrible thing in fact philosophers have said before that one of the fundamental requisites of science is that whenever you set up the same conditions the same thing must happen this is simply not true this is not the fundamental condition of science the fact is that the same thing does not happen that we can find only an average statistically as to what happens Nevertheless science has no completely collapsed philosophers incidentally say a great deal about what is absolutely necessary for science and it is always so far as one can see rather naive and probably wrong for example some philosophers or others said it is a fundamental to the scientific efforts that if an experiment is performed in say stockholm and then the same experiment is done in say kyoto the same result must occur this is quite false it is not necessary that science do that it may be in fact of experience but it is not necessary for example if one of the experiment is to look out at the sky and see the aurora borealis in stockholm you do not see it in kyoto that is different phenomena but you say that this is something that has to do with the outside can you close yourself up in a box in stockholm and pull down the shade and give any difference surely if we take a pendulum on a universal joint and pull it out and let go then the pendulum will swing almost in a plane but not quite slowly the plane keeps changing and so calm but not in quarto the blinds are down too the fact that this is happened does not bring out on the destruction of science what is the fundamental hypothesis of science the fundamental philosophy we state it in the first chapter the sole test of the validity of any idea is experiment if it turn out the most experiments work out the same in quarto as they are in stockholm then those most experiments will be used to formulate some general law and those experiments which do not come out of the same we will say were a result of the environment near stockholm we will invent some way to summarize the result of the experiment and we do not have to be told ahead of time what this way we look like if we are total that the same experiment will always produce the same result that is all very well but if we try it it does not then it does not we just have to take what we see and then formulate all the rest of our ideas in terms of our actual experience returning again to quantum mechanics and fundamental physics we cannot go into details of the quantum mechanical principle at this time of course because these are rather difficult to understand we shall assume that they are there 
and go on to describe what some of the consequences are one of the consequences is that thing which we use to consider as waves also behave like particles and particles behave like waves in fact everything behaves the same way there is no distinction between a wave and a particle so quantum mechanics unifies the idea of the field and its wave and the particle all into one now it is true that when the frequency is low the field aspect of the phenomena is more evident and or more useful as an approximate description in terms of everyday experience but as the frequency increases the particle aspects of the phenomena become more evident with the equipment with which we usually make the measurements in fact although we mention many frequencies no phenomena directly involving a frequency has yet been detected above approximately 10 raised to 12 cycles per second we also deduce the higher frequencies from the energy of the particle by a rule which assumes that the particle waves idea of quantum mechanics is valid thus we have a new idea of electromagnetic interaction we have a new kind of particle to add to the electron the proton and the neutron the new particle is called a photon the new view of the interaction of electrons and photons that is electromagnetic theory but with everything quantum mechanics correct is called quantum electrodynamics this fundamental theory of the interaction of light and matter or electric field and charges is our greatest success so far in physics in this one theory we have the basic rules for all the ordinary phenomena except for gravitation and nuclear process for example out of quantum electrodynamics come all known electrical mechanical and chemical law the law for the collision of billiard balls the motions of wires in magnetic field the specific heat of carbon monoxide the color of neon signs the density of salt the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to make water all consequences of this one law all these details can be worked out if the situation is simple enough for us to make an approximations which is almost never but often we can understand more or less what is happening at the present time no expectations are found to the quantum electrodynamic law outside the nucleus and there we do not know whether there is an exception because we simply do not know what is going on in the nucleus in principle then quantum electrodynamics is the theory of the all chemistry and of life if life is ultimately reduced to chemistry and therefore just to physics because chemistry is already reduced the part of physics which is involved in chemistry being already known furthermore the same quantum electrodynamic this great thing predicts a lot of new things in the first place it tells the properties of very high energy protons gamma rays etc it predicts another very remarkable thing besides the electron there should be another particle of the same mass but of opposite charge called a positron and these two coming together could inhalate each other with the emission of light or gamma rays after all light and gamma rays are all the same they are just different points of frequency scale the generalization of this that for each particle there is an antiparticle turn out to be true in the case of electron the antiparticle has another name it is called a positron for but for most other particles it is called anti so and so like anti proton or anti neutron in quantum electrodynamic two numbers are put in and most of the other numbers in the world are supposed to come out the two numbers that are put in are called the mass of electron and the charge of electron actually this is not quite true for we have a whole set of number for chemistry which tells how heavy the nuclei are that leads us to the next part nuclei and particles what are the nuclei made of and how are they held together this is found that nuclei are held together by enormous forces 
when these are released the energy release is tremendous compared with chemical energy in the same ratio as the atomic bomb explosion is to a tnt explosion because of course the atomic bomb has to do with changes inside the nucleus while the explosion of tnt has to do with the changes of the electrons on the outside of the atoms the question is what are the forces which hold the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus just as the electrical interaction can be connected to a particle a photon yukawa suggested that the forces between the neutron and protons also have a field of some kind and that when this field jiggle it behaves like a particle thus there could be some other particles in the world beside protons and neutrons and he was able to deduce the properties of this particle from the already known characteristic of nucleus forces for example he pre- predicted that they should have a mass of 2 or 300 times that of a electron and lo and behold in cosmic rays they was discovered by a particle of the right mass but it later turned out to be the wrong particle it was called a new meson or muon however a little while later in 1947 or 1948 another particle was found the pi meson or pion which satisfies yukawa's criterion beside the proton and neutron then in order to get nucleus force we must add the pion now you say oh great with this theory we make quantum and nucleodynamic using the pion just like yukawa wanted to do and see if it work and everything will be explained bad luck it runs out the calculations that are in the fall in the theories so difficult that no one has ever been able to figure out what the consequences of the theory are or to check it against experiment and this has been going on now for almost 20 years so we are stuck with the theory and we do not know whether it is right or wrong but we do know what is it little wrong or at least incomplete while we have been dwelling and around theoretically trying to calculate the consequences of this theory the experimentalist have been discovering some things for example they already discovered this neon and we do not yet know particles were found in cosmic rays a large number of the extra particles were found it in turns out that today we have approximately 30 particles and it is very difficult to understand the relation ship of all these particles and what nature wants them for and what the connections are from one to another we do not today understand these various particles of different aspects of the same thing in fact they we have so many unconnected particles in representations of the fact that we have so much unconnected information without a good theory after the great success of quantum electrodynamic there is a certain amount of knowledge of nuclear physics which is rough knowledge sort of half experience and half theory assuming a type of force between the protons and neutrons and seeing what will happen but not really understanding where the force comes from aside from that we have made very little progress we have collected an enormous number of chemical elements in the chemical case there suddenly appeared a relationship among these elements which was expected and which is embodied in the periodic table of mendeleev for example sodium and potassium are about the same in their chemical properties and are found in the same column in the mendeleev chart we have been seeking a mendeleev type chart for the new pa- particles one such chart of the new particles are made independently by gelman in the usa and nishijima in japan the basis of this classification is a new number like the electric charge which can be assigned to each particle called its strangers the this number is conserved like the electric charge in the reaction which takes place by nuclear force in table 2 2 are listed all the particles we going to discuss them such at this stage but the table will at least show you how much we do not know 
अंडर नीथ ईच पार्टिकल इट्स मास इज गिवन इन सर्टन यूनिट कॉल द मीव वन मीव इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट सेवन एट टू इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस ट्वेंटी सेवन ग्राम द रीजन दिस यूनिट वॉज चूज इज हिस्टोरिकल एंड वी शैल नॉट गो इन टू इट नाउ मोर मैसिव पार्टिकल्स आर पुट हायर अप ऑन द चार्ट वी सी दैट अ न्यूट्रॉन एंड प्रोटोन हैज ऑलमोस्ट द सेम मैस इन वर्टिकल कॉलम वी हैव पुट द पार्टिकल विद द सेम इलेक्ट्रिकल चार्ज ऑल द न्यूट्रल ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन वन कॉलम ऑल पॉजिटिवली चार्ज वन टू द राइट ऑफ दिस वन एंड ऑल नेगेटिवली चार्ज ऑब्जेक्ट्स टू द लेफ्ट पार्टिकल्स आर शोन विथ अ सॉलिड लाइन एंड रेजोनेंस विथ अ डैश वन सेवरल पार्टिकल्स हैव बीन ओमिटेड फ्रॉम द टेबल दिस इंक्लूड द इम्पॉर्टेंट जीरो मास जीरो चार्ज पार्टिकल the photon and the graviton which do not fall into the baron mason lepton classification scheme and also some of the new resonances the antiparticle of the mason are, are listed in the table but the antiparticles of the leptons and brevons would have to be listed in another table which were would look exactly like the one reflected on the zero charge column although all the particles expect the electron neutron photon graviton and proton are unstable decay products have been slowly only for the resonance stranger's assignments are not applicable for leptons since they do not interact strongly with nuclei all particles which are together with the neutron and protons are called barons and the following one exits there is a lambda with a mass of 115 mev and three others called sigma minus neutral and plus with several masses almost the same there are groups of multiplets with almost the same mass within one or two percent each particle is a multiplet has the same strangers the first multiplet is the proton neutron doublet and then there is a singlet the lambda The, then the sigma triplet and finally the xi doublet very recently in 1961 even a very few more particles were found or are the the particles they live so short a time they disintegrate almost instantaneously so as soon as they are formed they that we do not know whether they should be considered as new particles or some kind of resonance interaction of a certain definite energy between the a and by product into which they disintegrate in addition to the barons the other particles which are evolved in the nuclear interaction are called mesons they are first the prions which comes in three varieties positive negative and neutral they form another multiplet we have also found something new called k mesons and they occur as a doublet k plus and k nod and k dash not in addition in 1961 we also found some more mesons or maybe mesons which distinguish almost immediately a thing called which goes into three points has a mass 780 on this scale and somewhat less certain in any object which distinguish into two po- a points these particles called mesons and parons and the antiparticles of the mesons are on the same chart but the antiparticle of parons must be put on another chart reflected through the uh, chart zero column just and mendeleev chart was very good expect for the fact that they are were a number of red earth elements which were hanging out loose from it so we have a number of things hanging out loose from this chart particles which do not interact strongly in nuclear have nothing to do with the nuclear interaction and do not have a strong interaction these are called leptons and they are the following there is a electron which have very small mass on this scale only 0.510 mu then this there is that other the new mesons and muon which have a mass of much higher 206 times as heavy as an electron so far as we can tell by all experiments so far the difference between the electron and the muon is nothing but the mass everything works exactly the same for the muon as for the electron expect that one is heavier than the other why is there another one heavier what is the use for it we do not know in addition there is a lepton which is neutral called neutron and the particle has zero mass in fact it is now known as there is 
are two different kinds of neutrons one related to electron and the other related to neutrons finally we have two other particles which do not interact strongly with the nuclear ones one is photon and perhaps if the field of gravity also have a quantum mechanical analog a quantum theory of gravitation has not yet been worked out then there will be a particle of graviton which will have zero mass what is this zero mass the mass given here are the masses of the particle at rest the fact that a particle has zero mass means in way that it cannot be at rest a photon is never at rest it is always moving at 186000 miles a second we will understand more what mass mean when we understand the theory of relativity which we will come in due time thus we are confirmed with a large number of particles which together seem to be fundamental constituents of matter fortunately these particles are not all different in their intentions with one another in fact there seem to be just four kinds of interaction between particles which in the other of decreasing strength are the nuclear force electrical interaction the beta decay interaction and gravity the photon is coupled to all charged particles and the strength of the interaction is measured by some number which is 1 by 137 the detailed law of this coupling is known that is quantum electrodynamics gravity is coupled to all energy but its coupling is extremely weak much weaker than that of electricity this law is also known then there are the so called weak decay beta decay which causes the neutron to disintegrate into proton electron and neutron relatively slowly this law is also partly known the so called strong interaction the meson baryon interaction has a strength of 1 in this scale and the law is completely unknown although there are number of no rules such as that number of baryon does not change in any reaction this then is the horrible condition for our physics today to summarize it i would say this outside the nucleus we seems to know all inside it quantum mechanics is valid the principles of quantum mechanics have not been found to fail the stage on which we put all of our knowledge we would say it re- realistic space time perhaps gravity is involved in space time we do not know how the universe got started and we have never made experiments which check our ideas of space and time accurately below some tiny distance so we also known the ideas work about the distance we should also add that the rules of the game are the quantum mechanical pra- principles and those principles apply so far as we can tell to the new particle as well as the old the origin of the force in the nuclear leads us to new particle but unfortunately they appear in great profusion and we lack a complete understanding and that interrelationship although we already know that there are some more very surprising relationships among them we seem gradually to be growing groping towards an understanding of the world of subatomic particles but we really do not know how far we have yet to go in this task like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and stay tuned for the further videos